Hey future nurses, are you stressed about getting your license? Here at Remar Review, we believe in faith over fear. I'm Regina Callion, the number one NCLEX instructor in the world. Tune in to Remar Nurse Radio on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for new episodes every Thursday. We got that exclusive content you don't want to miss it. We can, we will, we we must, we must. Winning Wednesdays since last week. So that is phenomenal. 4,000 nurses participated in part one of Winning Wednesdays where we study the facts. So part two, this Wednesday, 9 a.m., don't miss it. Going live from the Remar Nurse Study Group. Hey, another amazing thing that we have been doing is getting ready to announce the winners for our cruise for two. That's right. Remar Review is sponsoring a cruise for two. Mm, mm, mm. All you have to have done. Listen, it's not too late to enter into this. We've getting, we've been getting the testimonial videos. All you need to do to win, all you need to do to win is study with Remar Review. Okay, you have the self study package or the online academy. Take your NCLEX, pass it. And then send in a testimonial video. That's it. That's it. And we will enter you in to win that cruise. Um, I think we got like four or five testimonial videos since last week. So Remar nurses are passing every day. Uh, We, again, will be sending a Remar nurse and the person of her choice, her her or his choice on a cruise, uh, all expensive paid to the cruise, flight down to the cruise port, $500, you guys, I, I just don't know. This is the season of giving. So this is what uh, we do here at Remar Review. No other NCLEX preparation company like this on the planet. I said it right here. Today's Monday motivation. Today is the perfect day to Q-U-I-T, quit. That's right. I want you to quit. I want you to quit. I want you to quit today. You know, Quitting never sounds like it's a good thing, but I have found an application where it is better to quit than to continue on. Some of you guys are, let me just start with this. When we talk about, when I say quitting, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. I mean to leave permanently. Hey, I mean to leave permanently. I mean to go away, depart from me depart from a thing forever. That's what I'm talking about. And when I say this, I mean, just to be totally candid with you guys, some of you guys need to quit what you're doing. And it is totally um, counterproductive. It is not helpful. Your actions are self-sabotaging. This is Monday motivation. So on Mondays, I try to keep it real with you guys. Some of you guys need to quit. And these are the things that I reflected on that I thought when you look at whether you're being successful or not, what are the things that are keeping you from your success, keeping you from reaching out and grabbing what you expect. And these are just the things that I think from reading posts and reading emails and things like that from you all, the Remar nurses today, you need to quit making excuses. Yeah. Yep. 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 You need to quit making excuses. You need to quit being afraid of NCLEX. I know I got New Jersey in the house. Florida's in the house. Boston is in. Hey, 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 you need to quit. Number three, I just thought, you know, fearing change, fearing change or getting out of the comfort zone. I'm always talking about getting out of your comfort zone because it's easy. It's easy to be in your comfort zone, but it's terrible. It's terrible when that comfort zone is actually just wasting a lot of your time procrastinating your studies. Oh, I'm, I'm preaching to myself there. I'm preaching to myself, but this is also um, applies to the whole Remar community as your leader. We have to quit procrastinating our studies. Every time we put it off, Every time we put it off, all it does is just build up. 
Cincinnati, California in the house. Um, number five, trying to please everybody. I'm talking about what we need to quit doing this week. You being a people pleaser, trying to please everyone is taking you off course. You cannot do it. You can't make everybody happy and grind at the same time. I'm just going to tell you, some, some of you guys probably just need to turn off your phones during the day. I'm serious. Some of you, every time you see your phone ring, you answer it. That, mm, that, that, that has wasted so much of your daytime. <laughs> like in the daytime, man needs to be working and our phones, our phones keep us from that. Quit trying to please everybody. Quit trying to please everybody. It's not going to happen. Also putting yourself down. Yes. Putting yourself down. What's up, Wisconsin, Memphis, Tennessee, representing here, Cassandra Green. Thank you for being here. Putting yourself down. I mean, these are just very practical things. These are just very practical things that you can do this week, that you can quit this week, that will help you get closer to your goals. And that's what this is all about. It, and, and these really honestly are very short-term goals that if you just put in a, a dedicated amount of your time for a very short period, you will separate yourself from like 90% of the population, 90% of the population <laughs> yourself to get in a place where you're like, I'm ready to do this difficult thing for just a short period of time, you will find success. I mean, the secrets to being successful in life are not these mysterious things that you have to go far and travel uh, distances and talk to wise ancient monks and things like that. No, just quit answering your phone during the day. That's it. Stop trying to please everybody. Get up early so that you can study. Go to bed early so that you can get up and be more productive. These are things that successful people do. And I'm just here to remind you guys that practicality and um, sacrifice and dedication and hard work yield results. I mean, when you plant a seed, you can expect to harvest, but sometimes we really don't want to plant a seed. Hmm. Um, and it's true. And listen, we think the challenges, and I like that comment, we think the challenges of studying for NCLEX are hard. Wait till you pass NCLEX. Wait till you pass NCLEX and you become that LPN or RN and you start making money and you have this career and you have paid vacation days. Ooh, you're going to have some bigger challenges. There are going to be a lot of people and places and things you're really going to have to quit because people are not going to be able to understand the success. They're going to, you talk about having haters. It happens when you reach another level of success. And so we have to be ready to quit a lot of things, period. You know, um, and I think some of the challenges, and I'm going to say this and move on. Some of the challenges that we have when it comes to quitting certain behaviors are that those behaviors used to work for us. There were things, and I put this on my Facebook page, um, but there are things that you used to do that used to make you top of the line, right? There are some things that you used to could do that would give you that success. But when you reach to, when you reach for another level of achievement or success, those old behaviors will no longer work. So you used to could stay up all night and eat and drink what you want and, and then get up, right? And then take a test and get an A on it, pass it. It's not like that anymore. All right, you're about to take a computer adaptive exam that's specific to your weaknesses. You can't just cram for this exam. You know, maybe 10 years ago, you could eat what you wanted to eat and never gain weight or never feel bad. Now, you know, if you eat one Oreo, you're done for the day. Mine is cloudy, can't think. You're going to gain 20 pounds from that one Oreo. There are things that you just cannot do when you're trying to take it to the next level. And so I just say, you know what? This week, the Remar nurses need to quit. They need to quit it. They need to quit playing, drop drop it all that's not contributing to your success. 
just drop it. Oh my goodness, just drop it. So it's a simple principle. Um, one once time again, take a look at it. And you know what? People don't understand this, but literally knowing when to quit something is a skill. It is. Knowing when to say no, knowing when to quit takes talent. <laughs> it takes talent because sometimes, especially for nurses, oh my goodness, um, we have this ability to just get rolling and we keep with it and we stick with it even when it's not working for us and we know it's not working for us. And that that's so true. Even when we're studying something and people will call our office and say, I got Kaplan, I got you world, I got everything, I got anything. And I still don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to finish out this program. You got to know when to quit. You got to know when at one point you're just wasting your time and when it's just time to cut it and let go. So I have this here. It says, and people have a hard time letting go of their suffering. What? Yes. Some of y'all know you suffering, but you don't want to change. And the reason is because out of a fear of the unknown, you really don't know, okay, what will happen? What will happen if I quit procrastinating? Could I make some progress? What will happen if I turn off my phone? Oh my goodness. What if Will Smith calls? Or what if I win the lottery? Like, what could happen if I turn off my phone? No, what's going to happen is you're going to be more dedicated. You're going to be more focused on what you're doing. But out of a fear of the unknown, people prefer suffering because what? Because it's familiar, because it's comfortable, because it's what they know. And so when we talk about making a change, we have to cut it right then and there. When you cut off a limb, when you cut off somebody's leg, you don't chop it off inch by inch and have them keep coming back and keep coming back. No, you chop off the whole leg at one time and then you say, now live, live. And some of us today, we just need to make sharp cut working. Don't just cut it. Just cut the whole thing off. It's dead. It's dying. It's no good. This is Monday motivation. Take it or leave it. This is our day to quit, Remar Nurses. And I applaud you guys who will accept this challenge because it's not an easy one. Uh, we need, we need, we need to, hey, we need to share this video, all right? So listen, all the testimonials that are coming in, we thank you, we love you, it helps us. You've come here, Remar Nurses, for your motivation. It has been delivered. Now it's time for Let's Talk NCLEX. Are you ready for your NCLEX questions? This is HodgePodge Monday. HodgePodge Monday. I got a testimonial. Hey, I got to read it. After, oh, after 265 questions testing for the ninth time, July 3rd, I am finally a Remar nurse. I love this testimonial. Nothing but God. Thank you, Regina and Mark, for everything. You are godsend. Thank you, Remar family. This is Nurse Ray. With God, everything is possible. Shout out, congratulations. After testing nine times, you didn't give up. That is phenomenal. And whoever is listening to this, what more motivation do you need besides that? Because after five times, after six times, after seven times, even a good man will say, I can't do this anymore but you persisted i need to see your video because i want to know like what made you continue on not to give up until the ninth time you know there's something behind that there's something motivating you to test even after nine times wait a minute. man that's crazy wait a minute i'm sorry did you say nine times yes my god i love it i love it I love hello it. mark what's up guys i just had to step in and yes. say congratulations nine times i overheard regina yeah uh, Sharita. shouting Sharita. Mm -hmm. yeah awesome Sharita. shouting you out and uh just personally congratulations that's amazing that's what we do this for yes all right back to the broadcast but that all was right amazing congratulations it's always nice to have somebody bust in on you um unexpectedly like uh elder mark Counton did he could have left us with a prayer, couldn't he? All right. So anyways, we're getting into, we're getting into, let's talk in clips. It's a hodgepodge day. I mean, these questions are going to come from all over. 400 Remar nurses on the line, only 42 shares. Come on, y'all. Let's, 
smash that share button. And listen, if you do, here's our share goal for today. Share goal, share goal. I have four questions for you today. Uh, four questions for you today. But if the Remar nurses smash that share button, it will unlock all of the six questions that I have for you today. And they're really good today too. So must I say, okay, must I say, if you share, that means you just like studying with Regina. You just like studying with Remar. Smash that share button. Question number one coming at you. Top four questions for today. Here we go. A nurse is walking down the hallway of the maternity unit. Mm -hmm. The cold pink infant security alert system sounds and a cold pink alert is announced. The first responsibility of the nurse should be to do which of the following. Number one says go directly to the hospital entrance and check each person leaving. Two, go to the obstetrics unit to determine if they need help with the situation. Three, call the maternity manager and ask if any babies are missing. Four, 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 observe individuals in the area for large bags and oversized coats. Mm hmm. What, what, what is the best thing for the nurse to do? I see the answers coming in, coming in on Facebook. Uh-huh. Yes, coming in. Yes, YouTube coming in. Shout out to YouTube. All right, you back at it. Somebody says, I failed, but I'm back at it. That's right. This is the place where you need to be. All right, here we go. What, 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 what is the best response by the nurse? I see you guys answering. I see it. All right, let me just tell you. I think most of you are on the right track. Good job, good job, good job. All right, here we go. It's correct. It is correct. Number four is the correct answer. The nurse needs to just observe. Observe individuals in the area for large bags and oversized coats. That's it. Let's look at the other choices. The, there's a problem. There's a problem with the other choices. Number one says, go directly to the hospital entrance and check each person leaving. Mm -mm, mm -mm, that is not, that is not the nursing responsibility. We're not physically checking people. We're not visibly checking at the hospital entrance. Wow, that's the security's job. Stay in your scope of practice, please, nurses. Two says, go to the obstetrics unit to determine if they need help with the situation. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? All right, um, listen, what's wrong with that? If you do that, think about it, think about it. YouTube, think about it. If you, if you hear a cold pink alert in the hospital, that means that a baby stranger has. Now, the, the question says the nurse goes up to that unit and starts looking around. Hey, who's the stranger now? Who becomes the stranger? That nurse. If you're not assigned to that unit, what are you doing up there? You know, that's just going to be a big issue. That's not going to work. All right. Also, and then, so number three says this, number three says, call the maternity manager and ask if any babies are missing. <laughs> what? <laughs> are you going to be tying up the phone, trying to get information? No, that's not going to be helpful either. That's not going to be helpful either. So what you can do as the nurse is, hey, observe individuals in the area for large bags and over size coats. That's it. And this is a very hot topic for your NCLEX exam. I highly suggest you consider, consider um, doing Remar review if you're not doing Remar review. All right, here we go. Question number two, we got four coming up for you guys. A client with a chronic mental illness who does not always take her medication is receiving government assistance. Okay. She lives at home with her sister and her brother-in-law. The client's sister works in a grocery store 
And the client should, the nurse, one family. Number two, marital. Number three, medication. Or number four, financial. What is the issue? I mean, this pay, this client has a lot going on. She lives with her sister and brother-in-law. She doesn't have enough. She doesn't have a lot of money. Um, what is going on with her condition? She has a chronic mental illness. What is your priority? If you were a nurse and you saw this on NCLEX, what would you pick? What would you sit there and pick? All right. Would you get psyched out by all of the distractors or would you or would you be able to get the right answer based off of your knowledge? I think you guys can do it. The correct answer. Shout it out. One, two, three. Pow. Medication. Of course, as the nurse, your priority is what? Your priority is there to evaluate, to assess, to um, to understand what is that patient's, what is that patient's medication compliance, all right? Because honestly, social work is going to have to handle a lot of those environmental issues. But if we don't get this patient on a dedicated medication regime, we're not going to be able to help much, all right? Good job. Most of you guys got that. I think most of you guys got that right. Just a few people picked four. And guess what? If you picked four, I'm okay because I prefer you to get these questions wrong here with your family than out by yourself on that exam. Question number, question number three says this. Here we go. After receiving report on four, four clients, which finding would the nurse report to the healthcare provider immediately? Number one, a client who has not had a bowel movement in four days, abdomen is firm. Two, a client who had an irregular pulse of 89 and now has a regular pulse of 100. Three, a client who is very depressed and has only eaten 10% of meals for the last two days. Or four, a client who has developed lesions around the neck and face who has been on IV penicillin for four days. Here we go. I'm, I am so excited to see what the Remark nurses are picking here. Ooh. I am so excited because I thought that this one was a stumper. I really did. I thought that this one was a stumper. But if you have been studying with the Remar products, then you will get this one right. And that's okay. I'm seeing a lot of the wrong answers. I need the right answer. I need the right answer. And this is where, this is where, honestly, that content knowledge comes in. Period. Period, period, period. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Come on. I'm, I'm giving you a chance. I'm giving you guys a chance to read the question. Think about what you're doing. Oh, I listen, <laughs> Remar nurses, stand up. We're on question number three of Let's Talk NCLEX. And most of you guys, honestly, have been on right now holding strong. This is question number three. Some of y'all are not going to make that perfect score today based off of this question. I can see it right now. I can see it right now. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to give the answers. I'm, I'm giving you guys all a chance to participate. I love the participation. I love the participation and I love the rationale explanations that I see sometimes. All right, correct answer, Remar nurses. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Did I psych you out? I psyched you out. All right, the correct answer, you'll be surprised to know it is actually number one. It is actually number one, a client who had a bowel movement who has not had a bowel movement in four days, four days, and their abdomen is firm. What could be that patient's issue? Yes, a bowel obstruction. That's major because what happens if the bowels are compromised? What happens if the bowels burst open because this firm abdomen can no longer take it? What happens? Bam, then that means we got a real big problem. Patient is on their way to being septic because their bowels exploded. Now look at these, look at this. Number four, a lot of you picked number four because you know what? You thought 
IV penicillin. Did you see that IV penicillin and think, oh my goodness, an allergic reaction? Mm hmm, mm hmm. But how long has that patient been on IV penicillin? How long? For four long days. Four long days. So, when do we normally see allergic reactions? How soon? How soon do we normally see an allergic reaction? I'm looking for somebody to pick, put it up. Mm hmm. Right. So, man, listen, it usually happens. It usually happens pretty good. I mean, pretty fast, right? Very fast. Exactly. Very fast. Very fast for allergic reactions. So we wouldn't expect a four day allergic reaction. All right. So. When we're talking about when we when we're talking about what is the priority, it's number one. Even if you guys were thinking a client is very depressed and has not eaten, uh, has only eaten ten percent of meals for the last two days. All right. So if we're talking about a depressed patient, is it normal that they're not eating? Is it normal that they're not eating? Yes, we expect a patient who is depressed to not eat. So this isn't an immediate cause for concern. I can't assume that this patient is suicidal. It does not say that, all right? It doesn't say that they're suicidal. It's just saying that they have not eaten, which I would expect. Now, I would not expect an abdomen to be feeling firm. I would not expect constipation for four days. There's something that's going on with this patient. Um, and then the client who had an irregular pulse that converted to a regular pulse, that's great. All right, so we don't have to report that immediately. So essentially, if we're looking at the abnormal patients, we have one, somebody with a firm abdomen, all right? And we know the abdomen is supposed to feel soft. And then I have somebody, number four, with lesions around the face and the neck. So then what becomes my priority? Is it the lesions on the face and the neck or is it the firm abdomen? That's how you guys have to think of this. And the priority here is going to be the firm abdomen. So that one was tricky. It's okay. Listen, you're here to learn. If you knew everything, if you knew everything, if you knew everything, then you would be super, super human because everybody is still learning. In nursing, there's always an opportunity to learn. Here we go. Last question. Question number four. A nurse is caring for a client with emphysema. Which of the following nursing interventions are most appropriate? Select all that apply. Okay. Select all that apply. All right. Here we go. Number one. Number one. Reduce fluid intake to less than 2,000 milliliters a day. Two. Teach client purse lip breathing. Three, administer low flow oxygen. Four, keep the client in a supine position as much as possible. Five, encourage alternating activity with rest periods. Oh, I see the answers coming in. I see the answers coming in. This is the last question here, unless the Remar nurses have met our goal of sharing encourage 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 hey i see all somebody picked every last one of these all right remar nurses what say if you for a client with emphysema what say if you what are the goals all right just got to update 550 nurses on the broadcast man excellent all right. I got the answers coming in on Facebook. Most people were saying two, three, and five. Um, is that correct? I got YouTube, two and three, one, two, one, two, three, five. Yeah, one, two, three, five. Let me show you guys the correct answer here. Um, it is going to be, hey, the correct answer, the correct answer is right here our share goal this is question number four the correct answer is you guys got to smash that share button right now okay so right now we have 107 shares i need us to get another 85 shares 
period. Period. It's 599, 85 shares. We're going to keep it going. Here we go. So the correct answer is going to be two, three, and five. Despite that saying one, it is five. I think it, it, it restarted when I put the, uh, the explanation. Two, three, and five is right. Um, clients with emphysema, we do not want them to reduce their uh, fluid, we want them to increase it. So up to 3,000 is best is recommended. Um, teaching the client pursed lip breathing. Oh, yeah, that is going to definitely, definitely be correct. Hey, this is a select all that apply question. These are supposed to be the tough ones, right? All right. Three is administer low flow oxygen. Yes, you got that right. Um, we don't want the patient in the supine position. No, 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 no. You want them up. So high fowlers is best. That tricked a lot of people. A lot of people, I don't know, you just you just glossed over the supine and saw as much as possible and you thought that was good. But that one was not correct. And then the final one is encourage alternating activities with rest periods. Great job, Remar nurses. They got it. Also, great job if you... Um, past this question. It was not an easy one at all. Hey, guess what? Remember, code WIN for your quick facts. I really want this in you guys' hand for Winning Wednesday next week. If you don't have it, get the quick facts for NCLEX. A lot of these topics come right from there. Also, 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 did we meet our share goals? Did we meet our share goals? Did we get the 85? Up, oh, just 30. Mark said we're just 30 more away. Just 30 more away. I just need 35 people to share this video. So here we go. 35 for the share. I got two more questions here. I want you guys to studying here. The last, the last answers were two, three, and five. Two, three, and five. I got a lot of new Remar nurses coming on in. Hey, winning Wednesday from the Remar Facebook group. I just needed a few more shares, 30 more shares on this video, and I can keep going with another select all that apply question. Did we make it, Mark? Did we make it? Did we make it? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> can we? 10 more. Mark said we're only 10 more away, guys. We're only 10 more away for Team Remar. Um, so can you please keep up last week's winning Wednesday? Yes. Um, I will keep it up for you. I will keep it up until Wednesday. So if you just got your package, give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. Um, somebody is asking here, why not number one? Why not number one? Reduce fluid intake to less than 2,000. Come on, y'all share. I like that Lauren says. Come on, y'all share. Reduce fluid intake to less than 2,000. We actually want to, we actually want to increase, increase to 3,000, increase to 3,000. Okay. Um, shout out, shout out. Mark said we made it. We made the share goal. Congratulations, Remar nurses. Let's get into this. I was hoping I wouldn't have to. I was hoping I wouldn't have to close this like I did last time. Let's keep going. Remar nurses, we made it. We made it. Question number five. A nurse is caring for a client with, oh, yes, diabetes insipidus. The client is diagnosed with a tumor and a decreased level of the antidiuretic hormone. Which of the following interventions should be included in the plan of care here we go. Select all that apply. I'm turning it up. I'm turning it up. Select all that apply. Diabetes insipidus. Here we go. Should she, number one, encourage fluids? Two, restrict fluids. Three, collect a 24-hour urine specimen. Four, encourage intake of coffee or tea. Five, monitor intake and output and take a daily weight. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Number one, encourage fluids. Two, restrict fluids. Three, collect a 24-hour urine specimen. Four, encourage intake of coffee or tea. Five, monitor intake and output. And then six should be take a daily weight. Go ahead and add six on there. Take a daily weight.
Let's go, Remar nurses. Don't get tripped up. Don't get tripped up. Don't get tripped up. We're talking about diabetes insipidus. Think about what happens with that. Think about what kind of issues the patient is going to be having. Think about what you will see in the urine. Do you, do you really need, do you need to do a urine specimen? Do you need to do one? Hmm. If you did a 24-hour urine specimen on a client with diabetes insipidus, how much urine are you going to have? Oh, my goodness. Can you think about, can you imagine, can you imagine, imagine, my son, my two-year-old watches Elmo, and Elmo says, imagine, 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 imagine how much urine you're going to have if you do a 24-hour, oh, my goodness, urine on a client with diabetes insipidus. So much urine, too much. All right, here we go. Here we go. The correct answers are, the correct answers are pow. Here we go. So it should definitely be, and this is okay if you put a uh, five and six or just five, I got you, but it should be one. It should be one and five and six, okay? Or one and five. All right, did you get it? Did you get it? Because listen, this patient with diabetes insipidus, are they going to be thirsty? Yes, they're going to be thirsty. They're going to be very thirsty. So we want to encourage fluids because they will have that, they will have that uh, thirst, okay? Also, 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 um, we don't need to collect a 24-hour urine specimen. That's not going to be required. Four, if you picked four, you guys know that coffee and tea, you guys know that coffee and tea will definitely cause the patient to put out more fluid, that's not going to be great. All right. And then five and six. So on my, um, on my previous slide, on my previous slide here, let me show you again, five and six were together. So monitor intake, six should have been take a daily weight. So if you just picked five, that's also correct. But here they're separated. So that was, that's why it's like this. Okay. <laughs> so if you just pick one and five, you got it. It's okay. You got it. It's all right. All right. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. All right. So that's that's why. So diabetes insipidus. If you didn't get this one right, if you didn't get this one uh, right, just look over that diabetes insipidus because it is a very important topic for you to be able to understand. Like you want to definitely know what the difference is between diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus. Most of my Remar nurses know that. You know the difference. If you don't know the difference, take two minutes out of your day and look up what is diabetes insipidus. That's it. All right. You'll be, you'll be so much better along if you just know what it is. So diabetes insipidus, what do you expect the patient to be? You expect the patient to be severely dehydrated. Yes. Severely dehydrated. You expect them to put out copious amounts of clear urine. All right. Also, what we expect them to um, have some tachycardia, some sinus tachycardia, because they're going to have a low blood volume because they're going to be putting out a lot of urine. So just things to remember for your NCLEX exam. I got to move on. I got to move on. All right. Number six says this here. The medical record review nurse is reading recorded entries. Which entry on a client's progress notes is the most complete? Number one, client stated concern about his upcoming procedure. I spoke with healthcare provider. Two, client received 300 milliliters of 10% dextrose via left forearm IV. Three, client ambulated adequately down the hall three times today. Or four, Client received 25 milligrams of hydromorphone for right knee pain, rating of four out of 10. Mm -hmm. So what say if you guys for this question? Oh, yes. What say if you guys for this question? Which of these entries is the most complete? Oh, this is so tough. This is so tough. I, and I can tell, I can tell right now by the answer choices coming in. Oh, <laughs> it's a tricky one. 
Oh man, here we go. Here we go. Um, what's the correct answer? What's the correct answer? You guys, okay, you guys think it's easy. You guys think this one is easy. I don't see the right answer. I see very much of the wrong answer. Very much of the wrong answer. What do you guys say? What do you guys say it is? Hmm? What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be shocked and you're going to say, I should have never doubted you, Regina. This was a strong, this was a strong critical thinking question. All right. Let me give you the right answer. The right answer is actually number, number Two, Anisha, you got it right. Anisha, you got it right. The correct answer is number two. Why, you might ask? Let me explain it to you. Number one, the client stated concern about his upcoming procedure. What procedure is that? What is concern? What, what is that? I spoke with healthcare provider. What did the healthcare provider say? Who was the healthcare provider? I, I mean, remember, when you're charting something, you may be called you may be called to recount those events 10, 15, 20 years later. Oh my goodness. That is going to be a big problem if you don't remember what that procedure was or exactly what was the concern. What, who did you speak to? What did that person say? Okay. So that's why number one wasn't correct. Let's go to number three. Client ambulated adequately down the hall three times today. What is adequately? What is it? Is it four feet? Is it two inches? How far did they go? What? I need some more clarification here. Adequately is very subjective. So that's why three is not the best answer. Are you guys following me here? Are you following me here? Okay. What about number four? Number four says, yes, a lot. Of, I mean, so many number fours. So many number fours. Number four says, hmm, 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 hmm. Client received 25 milligrams of hydromorphone. Which route? I don't know. Um, for right knee pain. Was it given PO? Was it given IV? Did they inject it into a muscle? Four is totally inappropriate. Okay. What's the route? Now, what is the most appropriate? And a lot of people pick number four right away and say, oh, this was easy, Regina. All right. Number two is going to be the most appropriate because it has the amount, it has the medication, and it has the location. All right. So it has those three things, right? And so it doesn't matter what the rate is. Like the rate is not going to be um, the the rate is not going to be more important than the than the dose. So if the client got 300 milliliters of 10% dextrose, right now, it doesn't really matter if they got it at one milliliter an hour or 100, you know you can chart how much they got and you know the route that they got it. So out of all of these choices, out of all of these choices, we're looking for the most complete. Didn't say it had to be perfect. I knew none of them wasn't going to be perfect when I wrote them, but which one was the most complete. Okay. <laughs> I like that. So Rose says, you know what? It wasn't easy after all. I like that. <laughs> it wasn't easy after all. And that's just the goal. I mean, I, I am here to um, challenge you guys. I'm here to just make you come up another level. That's it. And we do it all as a family. So if you didn't get it right, we're not we're like, it's all right. It's okay. You're here to learn. We're all learning. So this Wednesday, and I just have to say, um, is at 9 a.m. right from the Remar Nurse Facebook group. This is July 10th, and then we'll also do one more. Part three of the episode is July 17th. So I saw in the comments, we're studying the five-star quick facts. I will be going over pages 21 through 41. I'll be going over pages 21 through 41. I picked a few skills that I will be asking you questions on, and I'm still actually doing the medication review. So I'm writing uh, medication questions, and um, I know I did the cancer, some cancer questions today because in the original uh, 
Quick facts, I don't have those cancer drugs, but in the five star, I do. So I'm going over those um, with you guys. Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. So this is going to be great. Five star quick facts. If you use the code WIN, W-I-N, you can get this. All right. Um, wait, it's over email. Yeah, listen, it's 1255. I started this at 12 o'clock. So I, I did keep my promise. I like to study with you guys around an hour. All right. No more than that. So yes, thank you for putting that down. Natasha, winning Wednesdays, 9 a.m. We're going over pages 21 through 41. There's a ton of topics. There's a ton of topics. Right now, I think I'm at 40 questions that I will be bringing to you guys. So come prepared. Uh, pencil and paper. Remember, we're writing down the answers and then at the end, we review them all together. So, hey, Remart Nurses, I want to thank you guys so much. You make this programming, um, you make this programming so wonderful. Hey, I got somebody calling for prayer. I don't know. Mark says, hey, can they say, Mark, can you pray? <laughs> can you pray? All right. This is really cool. Um, so, yes. This book, remarnurse.com, is where you can find it. Don't get it on Amazon because you won't get it on Amazon. Um, I'm going to try to keep the rain away for you guys on Wednesday. So the sun is out. All right, remarnurse.com, you can get this book. Um, and it's $29.95. But if you use the code WIN for WIN, then you get it for just $20. This is the five star. Yes, Mark is coming for prayer, uh, which is more important than anything, any, anything. So if you're ready for prayer, if you're ready for prayer, um, hey, were you giving away a free t-shirt? I was not giving away a free t-shirt. Oh, yes, yes, you reminded me. Yes, I was. I apologize. I was. I totally forgot. Um, so yes, and Mark, you get the free t-shirt if you send in your testimonial video. Remember, that's how it works. So send in your video, I pass NCLEX, you get the Remar, you get the Remar merch. You get the Remar merch. And somebody said they liked the headband today. Thank you uh, for oh, that. Yeah. I was reading the comments, they said that they uh, they wanted to take a, uh, a pause or time out for the fabulousness Ooh. of the headband. They said, can we have a moment for the <laughs> fabulous headband? Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Thank you guys, thank you guys so much. Um, Mark is here. Mark has come for prayer. This is a special day because normally people usually call for prayer and we don't always get a chance to pray. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a, this is a great opportunity, Mark, for you to pray. Absolutely. For us. Absolutely. It's a special day. You had a, a, an amazing uh, motivation. Yes. Uh, in terms of quit doing things that are unsuccessful for you and just recognizing like when to take the exit. Yeah. Uh, and then also uh, and a testimonial from a, of a nurse uh, who knew when to stay in. Uh, and to keep sure. going, even That's after uh, nine, uh, after uh, eight failed attempts of testing for NCLEX, it was able to be successful. So mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. about like knowing where you are in your situation and taking that self uh, accountability or self assessment um, for your situation and not just, you know, things just don't happen yeah. uh, for no reason, but you have to know exactly where you are. Uh, but more importantly, other, other than knowing where you are, is knowing who's in control. Yes. Uh, and so I just want to encourage each and every one of you uh, to have uh, to allow God to be in control of your life, uh, not only your life, but also your, your your study habits, your worship practices, how your family is run. Because uh, when when you give control over to somebody, when you give control over to God, he becomes personally accountable and responsible for the results. That's true. When you give it over to God, he becomes mm -hmm. personally accountable and responsible for results. So we're going to pray for that. Uh, to that end, and then we're gonna let you go. We're gonna see you again on Wednesday and on Monday uh, next week again. So go ahead, all right, Wednesday. guys. Let okay, us... there's a lot of people calling for prayer. Um, I saw that Brandon was asking for prayer. Um, who who else? I just saw some names. So uh -huh. just if you are, uh, we'll just put it just on the tag screen. Yourself, put yeah, your name. tag yourself, put your screen because we'll do a prayer um, as an office later on um, for our, our Monday meeting. So absolutely. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank it. Uh, we thank you, Lord, and we count it a pleasure to be able to come to you uh, with the needs of this life, Lord. Uh, we understand, Lord, that you are the author and the finisher of our faiths, Lord. And so we uh, we place all of our cares uh, you, into Lord. your hands, Lord, because you care for us. Uh, there are nurses that are testing uh, this week. This somebody's week, testing yes. tomorrow. Somebody's testing Saturday. Yes. Uh, Lord, we're asking that you would give them the guidance uh, and the peace that passes all understanding that yeah. the work that they've put in 
uh, would be honored, Lord, uh, as they prepare to test. And even where that uh, that work is lacking, Lord, I ask that you would provide grace uh, for them to continue in the process uh, and that they would even be successful if you would choose to do it in, in such a way. Uh, Lord, there are those uh, who would like to study uh, and they're not sure exactly where their funds are coming from or how to get the materials. Uh, I ask, Lord, that you would just speak to them in a clear way uh, so that they can uh, make sure that they are able to make the sacrifices to do uh, exactly what they need to do, and that you would provide for them okay. in the process. Help them to have faith, Lord, in that area. Strengthen their faith uh, as they go through this nursing journey. As they uh, pass NCLEX, I ask that you would give them the right job, the right position, uh, that those who are over them would show them favor and show them grace, uh, and then that you would elevate them to a position where they're able to be over others so they can show the same love uh, and care that you have for us as your children. Uh, thank you to this end. In Jesus' name, bless the Remar nurses, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank Love you, guys. It. Thank you so much for coming to Motivational Monday and Let's Talk NCLEX. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We love you so much. Continue to have a blessed week. Um, remember, no one is time to quit. Quit, quit, quit this week. Look for where you can quit. <laughs> um, and then also look for where you can continue on, press forward, run your race, run your race towards the goal. Amen. All right. All right. See you guys later.